the love to the broken. You're the joy in the sadness. You are. Good morning, everybody. Where is everybody? Am I upsetting people that much that they're not coming back to church? Am I? I, um, I don't know where to stand because I was told last week I mustn't stand there because then I'm in the midst of people. So. I know my mouth is feeding, it shouldn't be feeding, but you know, seriously, sound guys, sort the problem out. doesn't help that I move away, Matt, because then I'm going to preach from the vestry. You're the God of the city. You're the king of these people. You'd think that the worship team would sing something or just fill, fill the silence. You'd, you'd think that, that after so many years of being in church and ministry, they would like, don't allow... Can I talk now? Well, I know I can talk. Um, right, good morning, everybody. Let's try this again. Because um, I'm wearing a tie. I think that's what it is. I'm wearing a tie, so, so the, the, every, everything is back to front. Why are you clapping? <laughs> okay, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Um, All righty then. Blush, blush. Color of my tie. You know. Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, uh, now I'm very young. Where are you going? What? 
Oh, Lord. Are there still people outside? Do they belong inside? Tell they're waiting for the offering, and then they're going to come in. Okay, that's the... So some, take photos of the... Okay, no, all right. Good morning, everybody. Um, if, you're, if you're visiting here this morning, you are incredibly welcome in God's house. I uh, trust and pray that God would speak to you. I, I just pray that as we go into communion as well this morning, that you would just have a moment. And um, we're going to be doing communion and service a bit differently today. Um, we are really deliberately going to try and be a bit different today. Um, just to give you a heads up, um, our, our worship set is going to be a bit shorter the message is going to be a bit shorter. And this morning, I really just want us to, to soak a bit, um, just to soak a, a, in the presence of God. Um, and so when we go into a time of communion, you're going to be invited to come forward. Um, there, will be, there will be folks serving you at, at either station. But we're going to ask you not to come and form queues. There's, there's plenty of communion elements for everybody. So, so don't panic. But I, we're going to invite you to... to to go into a moment of allowing God to speak. And when you want to come forward, and, and just if you want to come forward and want to kneel at the rail, you can kneel at the rail. If you want to take the communion back to your seat and just be, you can be. But we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to be spending time in communion. We're not going to rush it. We're going to spend time with it. Um, I, I really believe that it, communion is a space of, of connection with Jesus. Just connection with Jesus. The, the, the quick fire communion, we miss it. We, we miss the importance and the value of the table. We miss the importance and the value of what Jesus, what Jesus gave, what Jesus said, what Jesus did. And this morning, for me, the, the, the essence of, of why we're gathering here today as the church is to give our hearts to Christ. And allow Jesus just for a moment to speak to us. And we want to create that atmosphere for you this morning. That God is moving and that you can have time. Time to kneel and pray. Time to sit and pray. Time to just allow, allow, allow yourself to get lost in God's presence. Allow the Holy Spirit, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, to minister to you. So I'm just having a moment with Benjamin. From the 11th to the 14th of July, which is not this week, but the next week, um, we will be having holiday club for those that I am so, I sound so terrible. We will be having holiday club for Kidsville um, for 7 to 13 year olds. Um, so if you know of a 7 year old or you know of a 13 year old or any, somebody in between that, um, uh, James will be leading the holiday club. So we are, it's from 9 in the morning um, through to 1 p.m. and there are no costs involved for the kids. Um, there's no cost involved for the kids um, coming. Um, so please just bear that in mind. I'll make sure that I announce it next Sunday as well. And then we've, we, we've, there's two very important notices that I want to speak into this morning. The one is um, we, we take anywhere from 25 to 30,000 rand of our offering that we gather here as the church. Um, we take that and we, we, we do food ministry. We we put food parcels together for, for folk in, our, in and around our community, from inside the church, obviously, um, but also a little bit broader to that, too. You know? um, so we have an incredible ministry where, and that's just that's a, that, that's our starting place. Um, and we do a lot of other ministry outside of that towards the community, um, towards church members and also the community. And, and yet God in, 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 in Genesis, when, 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 when he had shaped Adam and Eve and when he had sort of put them together and, and, and he had created, he, he then turned to them and he said, I, I want you to be custodians. And my words, I'm paraphrasing, but I've I, I placed you here to be custodians of creation. 
to look after, to preserve, to, 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 to protect, to, to nurture, to, to make sure that creation as a whole is underneath, not, not to abuse, which we've become guilty of, but to care for. Um, um, and so there's, there's so much in creation that, that, we, that we perhaps don't care for. And one of the ministries that really just uh, stood out um, for me, um, it's a ministry called um, Cause for Pause, um, it's a it's a it's a uh, an animal welfare um, uh, ministry, um, and and we really want to to really be uh, intentional as a church um, f- to to sow into this ministry, um, and so we're going to be very intentional. It's going to be a ministry that we've adopted as a church. Um, so I have used to have two of those funny little things on the top. Um, one's now. Uh, giving Jesus a hard time. Um, but we're looking for dog and or cat food, old towels, blankets, pre-loved kennels, collars, leads, bowls, assistance towards our vet bills. We're looking for, to make a difference, um, the, the ministry itself is in the informal, informal settlement areas. Um, it, pretty much the, the lady who runs it goes in and educates um, the owners of the, the, the animals and how to treat a dog, how don't leave it chained up if you're not sure, make sure there's water. And then also to, to try and house them, they, they, they try and take the dogs to get spayed and to get looked after so that we don't um, you know, um, have an explosion of, of, of animals that aren't loved. Um, friends, it's, it's a ministry. Not everybody here I get is going to feel led to that. I get that. But there are some of you um, that are perhaps like me that have a deep love and, and heart really breaks when, when I see, when I see um, the abuse of, 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 of our creation. So if it feels, if it's something that, that you can buy into, you might have an old bowl at home, you might think it's, uh, what difference does that make? It makes a difference because there are dogs that don't have bowls. Um, and so we can put a bowl of water down for the dogs. You might have an old blanket that's, that, that you, trust me, an old blanket that's torn is better than no blanket. You, you with me? You might have an old kennel. I mean, I've got five dogs at home. Don't tell anybody I said that. But I've got five dogs at home, um, and we have three kennels. But they only use one. It's like they fight over the one, you know? It's like, and, and you know, they try and get in there. Um, and when all five of them are squashed in, it's quite an interesting journey. But anyway, um, besides the point. So just a, it's a real space. That, that is a real ministry that we want to adopt. Um, and we want you to pray into that. Don't throw out your empty ice cream containers. Um, those are also um, able to be used and stuff. Okay? All right? So just have a, have a squeeze. You might have a chain at home. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. And then the next one is... is um, um, how many of you... Um, how many of you remember Neil Robinson? Hmm. It's quite interesting. So Neil Robinson had a vision called Amcare. It was birthed. And um, Amcare uh, has been through <laughs> has been through ups and been through downs, has had good days and bad days. Um, and care also became a painful space here at the church. A lot of people were hurt, certain things had happened, um, management issues and stuff like that, um, to which I am not even going to um, engage with because it's a new season. But we had a, 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 a board meeting for my sins. I'm the, the chair at Amcare now. Um, and uh, we had a board meeting on Thursday. And at our board meeting on Thursday, the board um, made a decision um, that we would be very intentional about being back as a church within the AMCARE space. So currently AMCARE is very much a department of social development. There's a lot of social welfare that happens in and through AMCARE and very little spiritual ministry that happens in that space. So very, very, a lot of government social welfare services, we welfare, which is awesome, but very little spiritual. And so we are going to, in the next month, we are going to be re-looking at how the property at Amcare has been utilized and what property we can, we can take and reuse and renegotiate and re-look at doing actual ministry from. 
and we are going to be um, becoming um, intentional about networking with other ministries in and around the Alberton area, um, from children's ministries to old age homes to whatever uh, ministries where people have a need. So the amount of times I've been phoned, I think Simone's been phoned in charge of pastoral care where people have phoned and said, do you have a space for me? I need a place for a weekend. I need a place for a night. I know of a family that's just been evicted and they've got nowhere to go and we have not been able. And yet we have the property and we have not been good stewards. And I'm calling it like it is. We have not been good stewards on my heart for us to be good stewards of that which God has birthed. In and through Neil. It was Neil's vision. It was Neil's passion in and through Neil, a passion, a vision to create a space called Alberton Methodist Care and Relief Enterprise, hence the word AMCARE, to be able to be there for the least in our community, the most vulnerable. And we get that right from a social welfare point of view right now, but we don't get that right from a ministry point of view. And so we want to merge the church's ministry back into the AMCARE space. And so I'm asking you to please pray. Pray, pray, pray that we get it right, that we hear what God is wanting for us to do. Not what we want to do, not what man wants, not what our own thoughts and agendas are. But what does God want us to do? How does God want to lead us? Where is God going to lead us? And we are going to celebrate the fact that we will be a light that shines in the darkness. That we will be a beacon of hope to those that are hopeless in and around our community. So please pray for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to pray together. Then we're going to sing a bit. Um, and then we're going to see if my mic comes back on so I can preach a bit. But then most importantly this morning, we're going to be spending time with Jesus. Just in a time of ministry this morning. I just felt led this week to be in a time of ministry. Let's pray. Father God, as we gather in your house, as we gather as the church, Lord, we come this morning not because we are worthy, but because you are worthy. Lord, we come this morning because we want to meet with you. And as we meet with you, Jesus, I pray that our lives will be changed. This morning, Lord, I pray that there will be lives changed. That the curse of sin would be broken. That we would be brought to our knees and broken in our spirit. because we are sinning against you, Father. That which we hide, that which is in the dark, that which is behind closed doors. Lord, we place that before you this morning. Holy Spirit, would you move in our midst this morning? Would you move in the midst of our song? Would you move in the midst of the word? But Lord, would you move as we take time to be still and to know that you are God. I pray this morning that God would free you, would free you from the addiction that is holding you. I pray that God would heal you, that God would heal you from that illness that is busy destroying you. This morning, Jesus, this morning, Jesus, it's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. We want to celebrate that. Lord, birth something in us this morning that we would never be the same. That when we walk out of these doors, that our lives will be changed, never to be the same. Help us, Lord. 
to embrace who we are as the body of Christ. Uniquely positioned and placed. Who are we? We are yours. Help us to own that, to live that, to celebrate that. But most importantly this morning, help us, Lord, to believe that. To believe that we are your chosen people. Thank you for loving us this morning. Thank you for loving us this morning.
only reason we gather is to praise your name. Today is about you and no one else. This moment is about you and no one else. And so we recognize, Lord, that you are the king of all the ages. You are the author of our salvation and the reason why we stand here singing, Jesus. And so Lord, this morning as we go into our service, would you be lifted high? in everything that we do. Would our hearts be open to you? Would our ears and our minds be open to you, Lord? And would you move powerfully amongst us this morning, Lord? We are listening. We are here, Jesus. Come, Lord. Come, Jesus. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. For your glory be lifted high.
we offer the service to you. We offer our hearts to you. Would everything we do today continue to lift your high? We thank you, Lord, and we pray this in your beautiful, precious name. Amen. Amen. I invite you to take a seat. So far, so good. May I take my jacket off? <laughs> it's really hot up here this morning. Um, it's a hot. <laughs> this morning, I want to derail us a bit. We're on a, a, a sermon theme, um, White Church, and um, for some of you, you might be going, it sounds like it's a repetitive message. We've heard this, we spoke about this last year, we did the, our called and commission series, and we spoke about it at the beginning of the year when we did stand up and step out, and we did, uh, we, we looked at our vision statement, and, and so this like White Church thing seems to be... Um, um, an ongoing uh, theme. It's and and it's deliberate. It's a deliberate ongoing theme. I'm going to start by sharing a story with you that you all know, um, and then we'll see where God takes us. There was this new pastor who arrived at a church um, somewhere in the world, and um, they were excited. Um, he was young, wore a tie. Um, Looked the part. No, okay. And they were excited about this new guy coming in. They'd had a minister that had been with them for 30 years and had done great ministry work. And uh, they were just excited about the new guy coming. So the new guy came in and, and he preached that first sermon. And he, man, he was on fire. Like, seriously. So they literally, he, they were scared that the, the wooden pulpit was going to actually take flame and, and ignite. He was just like on fire. And the message was just on point, and it was just, it was there, and it was real, and, and it got everybody here, and everybody was like, oh, this is going, like, the future ahead is just going to be absolutely amazing, and, um, and then the next week, he preached the same sermon, and they were like, ah, oh, it was, and the following week, he preached the same sermon, and the following week, he preached the same sermon, and the following week, he preached the same sermon, seven weeks in, he had just preached the same message every Sunday. And eventually the church, the congregation, the church got together with the elders and they said, listen, either you tell him to preach something different or we get a new pastor because this is just not acceptable. And um, so the elders got together with the minister and they sat down and said, listen, man, is there a problem? You know, what's going on? And so he said, okay, okay, you'll address it. Next, next Sunday he stood up and he said to his church, the church, he said, when you start doing, when you start doing and applying what I'm preaching about in this message, then I will move on to the next message and to the next message and to the next message. We live in a world that is information overload. How many of you remember what I preached about in January? For those, no, no, don't go back in your notes. No, 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 no. You with what I'm trying to say? How many of you remember what we preached about six weeks ago when we were in the previous service? And it might be there, there might be a segment, there might have been a catchphrase, there might have been something, but we are in an information overload, and sometimes it's very good for us to just simplify our things, simplify our stuff. And so the wide church journey that we've been on um, has been very deliberate. In, in, in Why do we gather? Because it's a biblical command. 
because it's mandated in Scripture, because all Scripture is God-breathed and used for all Scripture, not some, because the Word of God says in Hebrews 10, do not forsake the gathering as some are in the habit of doing. We are called together because Jesus gathered, because Jesus attended temple. Jesus was obedient to being in the temple courts, and he was obedient to observing all of the feasts and the rituals of what it meant to be a Jewish man, a rabbi. And aren't we called to follow Jesus? Isn't Christ our, our model, our role model, our example? Don't we all want to be like Jesus? Some of us? No, all of us. Should we want to be like Jesus? We want to do what Jesus did. We want to speak like Jesus spoke. We want to, we want to heal like Jesus healed. And, and, and we can if we just believed and had enough faith. We could do amazing things. We could move mountains if we just had a little seed. A little, little seed. And so I want, to, I want to speak this morning about, about culture, our church culture. It's, it's like a hip word that's out there. A couple of months ago, um, Stephen um, rocked up in the office and he was like, so like, what's our church culture? So I said, well, I don't know. What do you mean? Um, and he said, well, what's our church culture? I was at the school and there was a crowd of, 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 of youth people from another church and, and they were like, so Stephen, what's your culture? What's the culture of Alberton Methodist? Stephen was like, oh, yeah, yeah. we love Jesus? You know, yeah, what's your culture? And so it's, it's like a hip new word in, in the church environment. It's like the church has to have a culture. We have a culture. And this morning I want to speak into our church culture so that you understand what our culture is. And it's a simple culture. But before that, I, I, want, to, I want to speak into, I want to speak into um, every, a lot of people have asked me, why don't you ever preach on sin? Why don't you ever preach about sin? Nail it, you know? Put it out there, nail it. Speak about sin. So I'm going to, I'm going to preach a little, a little shortened message on sin and then tie that into our culture. The greatest command is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, with your all. Welcome to church, sinners. Welcome to church, sinners. So it doesn't matter what your sin is. We struggle to fulfill the greatest commandment. And the other is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Welcome to church, sinners. So if you're ever going to ask me why don't I preach about sin, I just have. Don't take separate sin. Don't take issue sin. Don't take hot topic sin and put it in, or hot topics and put it in, and we need to address that and we need to address it. No, no. When we learn to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength, then everything else becomes a part of that because then we learn to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And if we can love our neighbor as we love ourselves, then all of a sudden we have something beautiful in our midst. We have a Methodist church culture. Our church culture is grace. Grace upon grace. All are welcome. All are children of God. All are the beloved of Christ. All. For God so loved the world that he gave his son so that Methodist people who were obedient to Wesley would be saved. No. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the... Can, can, can you, Will you say it with me? One, two, three. For God so loved the world. Not Bridge, not Levin Centrum, not Mayerton Methodist, not Alberton Methodist, not, not the Enchia Church down the road, not the Archias Church, not Doxa. For God so loved the world, the Hindu, the Muslim. The Buddhists. For God so loved the world. For God did not send a son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. Grace upon grace. Our church culture is about grace. Our church culture is about embracing John 3 verse 16 and 17. Because we cannot and we struggle to fulfill the greatest commands, 
to love the way Jesus loved. But yet in the midst of all of that, God loves us so much that he gave his son. He allowed grace to pour out over our lives. We come to church on a Sunday morning because we are Alberton Methodist. But we are God's children. We are the body of Christ that God has placed here in a unique space, in, in a unique context. We are a, a, in a unique context. You know, in, in Acts, I think it's in Acts, yeah, it's in Acts, Acts chapter 1, when Jesus was ascending to heaven, and he, he says to the disciples, wait for the Holy Spirit, and then you will go out and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, to the very ends of the earth. Many of us, most of us are called to be witnesses of Christ here in our Jerusalem, in Alberton, in Brackenhurst, in, in, in wherever you live, our Jerusalem. There's a couple of us here who have been called by God to go out and to go into a Judea space or a Samaria space or even to the very ends of the earth. And that's okay. That's, that's a part of the body. That's not, we're not, it's not either or. It, it's, it's an embracing of, of the fullness of who we are as the body of Christ. And so we celebrate those that are active right here. We celebrate those that are active out there. We celebrate those that have been called to go out there. We celebrate what God is doing in our midst. But our culture is one of grace. And so we take grace out here. We take grace out there. And we take grace out there because God so loved the world. That he gave his one and only begotten son. That whoever might believe in him shall have life and life everlasting. And the son did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. The world might be saved. Who are our brothers and sisters in Christ here in Alberton in our context? Believe it or not, but they're our brothers and sisters in Christ. They might not see it like that. And that's the sad, it's a, it's a sad indictment of the church of today, that churches find themselves as islands unto themselves. Look at us. We don't want anything to do with you. We don't want anything to do with you. It's all about us. No, it's not all about you. It's all about Jesus. And when pastors and ministers and Dominies and prayer comes, start to understand that it's about Jesus. And Jesus works in different ways, in different situations, in different circumstances, and in different contexts, but it's about Jesus, and it's about your culture. Bridge has a culture. Levin Centrum has a culture. The end here, Kirk, Kirk has a culture. I got that right. The, 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 the Doxideo move has a culture. The, the, the Anglicans have a culture. The Catholics have a culture. Everybody has a culture. We have a culture. And I'm proud of our culture. Our culture is grace. Our culture is grace. All need to be saved. All can be saved. All can know that they are saved and all can be saved to the uttermost. That is our culture. All. Not some. Not a few. But all. But all of them. But all. Our context is unique. There's a lot of churches in this area in Alberton that are very residentially driven. But we sit in a unique space. I don't know if you've ever noticed that or thought about that. We have residential area, big residential area right behind us. We have schools. We are in a city. We have a taxi rank right across the road. We have a shopping center. We have a hospital. We have old age homes. We have a context. Our, our context is, is vibrant and it's alive. And people say, well, we're the old church. We're not an old church. There's no such thing as age in God's eyes. The only time you're old is when you think you're old. The only time you think you can't do ministry is because you think you can't do ministry. There's no such thing as I'm too old for ministry. No, your ministry just changes. You shift gear. You go into reverse. But, and that's okay. Um, you know? Some of you didn't get that. <laughs> There's too many of you who sit here on a Sunday morning that are in neutral or reverse. You, you, need, to, you need to get out of that. Stop putting your foot on the brake. Trust God into gear and put your foot on the petrol. Allow God to move you. Allow God to take you. Allow God to shape you. Allow God to map out a pathway through you so that you can take the culture of who we are, grace-filled, grace-living, grace, grace. Take our culture and share it so that people who look at the church today 
realize that there is hope, that there is life, that there is joy, that there is something more than judgment and condemnation that comes out of the buildings that house the people of God. Why is it that so many churches are known for what they stand against as opposed to what they stand for? What do I stand against? I stand against a whole lot of things. But more importantly, I stand for grace. Because without grace, I wouldn't be here. Without grace, you wouldn't be here. Without grace, we wouldn't have what we have. We wouldn't be able to hold on to what we hold on to. So God has birthed a vision inside of us. He's birthed something inside of me as, as your pastor, as your lead pastor. He's birthed something, a vision, a passion to be, to do, to get up, to get going, to stand up and to step out, to be a church that leaves the building. It's not enough that we just come and sit on our blessed assurances. Sunday after Sunday. And we sing great songs. And then we go home and we do nothing. It is by grace that you have been saved. Not because you're worthy, but because Christ loves you. He loves you. He loves you from that side all the way to the back. Even the sound desk. <laughs> all the way down here. All the way back and everything in between. The love of God. The grace of God. How many of you live in a perfect family? That would, that's my in-laws. I'll chat to you later. I'll, I'll, I'll share some truths with you guys. Our families are all broken. Disjointed. Dysfunctional. We as the body of Christ are broken, disjointed, dysfunctional. But grace brings us together. There is nobody perfect. There's nobody that's got it all together. Not the Pope or any bishop or any cardinal or any minister or preacher or priest. Nobody. No worship team, no worship band, no worship leader, no prayer warrior, no evangelist, no apostle, no whatever. We all need God. For whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For all <clears throat> have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Not some, all. Hence our four alls. All can be saved. All need to be saved. All can know that they are saved. And all can be saved to the uttermost. How many of you know what our mission is? How many of you can put our vision statement, the, the four R's? How many of you know they can rattle it off your tongue and you just know that what we stand for? You know how to take grace and impact it and apply it into your life as a member of Alberton Methodist Church. <clears throat> I'm waiting. Somebody? So, this is how we do it. As the body of Christ that meets here, we are called to rediscover Jesus. The biblical Jesus. The Jesus of Scripture. Not the Jesus of TBN, or the Jesus of that church, or this church, or the Jesus of that understanding, or that interpretation. No, no. The biblical Jesus. The Jesus that came to set us free. The Jesus that came to give us Hope, the Jesus that came to give us life. We are called to renew ourselves. Remember that? Rediscover Jesus, the biblical Jesus, to renew ourselves, to be spirit filled and spirit led, born again children of God. Okay, that's six of you. Woohoo, we get in there. We need another six and we can change the world. Jesus only needed 12. Anybody else? Another six? Can I have 12 people? Is there anybody here that wants to change the world? Anybody here that wants to go out into this world and make a difference? Does anybody here want to go out in the world and see Jesus? See Jesus? See Jesus in your brother? See Jesus in your sister? To see Jesus actively walking in the community? It's Christ in you. It's Christ in you. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
Not the Christ outside of you, not the Christ next to you, it's Christ in you. It's the light that shines from the depths of your soul when you got to know Christ, when you're getting to know Jesus. And yet some of us don't want more of the Spirit. Why on earth not? You want the knowledge of God, but you don't want the power of God. Without the power of God, the knowledge of God is pointless. It's useless. You're not fulfilling what Jesus said. Go and make disciples. Go out into all the world, preaching, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Spirit. The words of Jesus, they come to us. We are called to be people who want to be spiritful, born again, more of you, God, more of you, God, more power, more of you, be lifted high, God, come, come, come into me, just use me. In my little square space in life, use me. May I be a grace-filled, a grace-soaked child of God. That when somebody hugs me, they hug grace. When somebody hugs me, they hug grace. May I be a sponge for Jesus. May you become sponges for Christ. That when somebody hugs you, you know what happens when you hug a sponge? It just squeezes all the water out. When they hug you, may they squeeze all the grace out. May they squeeze all the love out. May they, squeeze, may they squeeze the forgiveness, the mercy, the goodness of God out of you. And may it saturate them. That they know, that they know Christ is alive. He's real. He exists. Help us, Lord, to be contagious as Christ followers. We are called to redefine what it means to be church. Not what it has become. The world outside looks at these buildings and they laugh at us. They make jokes about us. We're hypocrites. We're judgmental. We're bigots. We a thousand and one words. That's what the world thinks. When 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 the poo hits the fan out there, they don't come running to the church. They go everywhere else except to the place that offers hope. Let's redefine what it means to be the church in our community because grace defines us. If grace is our culture, if grace is what we hold, if grace is what we celebrate and embrace, then grace, then grace is available. And everybody needs grace. Everybody needs grace. We are called to be a church that reaches out to the community, to leave the building, to go out and to touch the very least of God's people, to make a difference. Friends, we need to be a church that understands our culture is grace. We are all sinners, saved by grace. And our culture is grace. We believe that all people need to be saved because God gave His Son for everyone. We believe that all people can be saved because everybody has an opportunity if you and I will share the good news, we give people the opportunity to receive salvation, to get to know Jesus. All can know that they are saved. How many of you here know that you're saved this morning? Yeah, yeah. Really? No, no, that's exciting. Because there's so many of us who go, I'm not sure. But when we know that we're saved, when we have salvation, when the Spirit has been birthed inside of us, something changes on the inside. And then we can embrace this concept of faith. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. My hope is in Jesus. My hope is in His blood. My hope is in His redemption. My hope is in what He is restoring. My hope is in Jesus giving me a Father who has prepared a room. My hope. I don't see it. But I live for it. I'm excited by it. I'm good to go. You good to go? 
Okay, so by that I mean I'm, I'm okay to die. I'm good to go. I don't want to go. I, I, I want to go. I want to see my young one grow up and be a professional gamer. So he came home from mom and dad, from, from grand, nana and papa the other day with two crutches. And they were his guns. And him and his brother were going to be, be professional gunners. Okay? And then he had an epiphany, a moment. And he comes out and he takes the crutches and he says, No, I don't need this anymore. Me and my brother, we're going to be professional gamers. <laughs> Not gunners. Gamers. And dad's heart sank. <laughs> we need to know that we are saved. We need to know that Jesus lives in us. And when Jesus lives in us, we need to know that it's only by grace. And because of that grace, we know that we've got something to give to people. We also need to know that we can be saved to the uttermost. Not just enough. So many of us just want and have enough of God. God wants to give you it all. But you've got to ask for it. You've got to want it. And you've got to believe it. God, more of you. Holy Spirit, more of you. More of you. And so this morning we're going to go into a time of ministry. And the ministry this morning is about grace. I don't want you to rush I don't want you to rush to the communion tables. I want you to reflect on your journey with God. I want you to become real just for a moment. I want you to become real with what's going on in your life. What are you asking God for? How has God's grace impacted you? How has it changed you? How is it busy shaping you? What do you need to let go of today? What bondage needs to be broken? What addiction, what addiction needs to be, be taken? What do you need to be set free of? What fear holds you back? What, what, what's holding you down? What, what brick wall have you built to protect something? This morning I'm asking you to become vulnerable. Not with me, not with each other, but to become vulnerable with God. So often we come, we hear the word, we get challenged, we sing songs and we leave. And we don't give God time to do a little bit of ministry. So this morning, as we gather in song, as we gather to embrace the greatest gift of love that was ever given, Jesus, who gave of himself. This morning, I pray that you would be bold enough to surrender enough, to let the Holy Spirit move enough, to change you enough, that you will never be willing to just settle for enough ever again. More of you, God, is what I pray. More of you, God. Lord, in our culture this morning, may we know that all means all. There are none so far from God that you, that you are, are not included in the gift of grace. This morning, Father, as the elements are shared and taken, Lord, I pray. I pray grace upon grace. I pray grace to flow. It is your grace that sets, that sets our feet upon a rock. It is your grace that, that leads us your grace. 
And so as we prepare our hearts for communion this morning, as we prepare our hearts to just go into a time of ministry, we're going to bring our offering to God. Our offering is a time of worship, is a time of surrender. Our offering of our resource, of our times, of our gifts, but also in this time of offering as we prepare our hearts. I invite you to bring a name, a face, a situation where you need God to move, where you need God to move. So as we go into our time, our ministry time, our stewards will wait upon you for your offering. And as we take that up and as we embrace this time of just being, allowing God to move, allowing God to speak, may you be still this morning. May you be still in the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning.
Jesus took he took bread at that last meal and he broke it he gave it to his family his friends and he said to him this is my body my body given for you whenever you eat of it do it in remembrance of me family of God today we remember grace we remember the greatest gift that we have been given it is by grace that we have been saved through faith not by works not by what you've done in your life but what Christ has done for you and so the body of Christ is before us in the same way after the meal Jesus took the cup of wine and he blessed it and he said to them this is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins This morning we gather and we bring our sin before God. And as we engage and embrace this gift of grace, our sins are washed clean. We are new creations in Christ. The old has gone and the new has come. And so friends, this morning, as we go into a time of ministry, please hear that this is a time of ministry. We will be playing music for the next half hour or so. When you are ready, you are welcome to come forward and to receive. You're welcome to take the elements back to your seat and have a moment there. You're welcome to kneel at the rail. You're welcome to leave before the service closes this morning. We are in a time of ministry. We are not going to put a time frame on God. We're not going to put a time frame on the Holy Spirit moving in people's lives this morning. The one request that I do have is that we would not form cues. That we would allow ourselves to be in ministry. So when you are ready, our stewards will be here to serve. When you are ready to come, when you are ready to receive, allow yourselves to soak for a while in the presence of God. Now the words of song to speak to you. Open yourself up this morning. Become vulnerable and let God move the way only God can move.
Your glory be lifted high.